Coach, we gosh, it, it feels like a week ago, but it was probably you know May, June when we talked to you last. So, walk us through what you guys have been able to do since then. Well, um, you know, we got everyone back on campus, and uh, while they were at home prior to that, you know, we gave them workouts and all that stuff. We we couldn't really be involved in it. But our strength and co conditioning coach uh, could give them workouts, but she couldn't lead the workouts. So, you know, she did a great job and planned everything out during, uh, you know, their home uh, while they were staying at home. So they were doing that. So when they came back on campus, they were, you know, in in pretty good spirits and and. Uh, you know, their fitness level was, was pretty good. So we could, you know, they, they worked out when they got back with their strength coach. And, you know, now they're in the weight room in, in little pods, little groups. And they, uh, they loved it because they were back on campus, back uh, having their independency and, uh, you know, all that stuff. So, and then August 12th hit and, and we started team practice. Uh, we took it really slow, very slow and uh, brought them back to to where we are right now. So when you got them back, what did you notice initially? Um, things that th maybe they were short on, conditioning, strength, skill? What, what was it that you had to concentrate once you got them back? You know, it was just starting all over. Um, the strength, the conditioning, uh, even their skills, because a lot of them didn't have gyms to go to. And, uh, you know, so they did stuff on their own, um, whether it was body weight um, activities, you know, touching the ball um, with their parents, <laughs> you know. So they were, they were being creative. How about that? Gotcha. And are you now to the point where – you would normally be in mid-September or are you way behind? Um, I think we're still behind. You know, we, we're trying to get them up to speed, but we missed the whole preseason of uh, competition. So that that didn't help or hasn't helped. Uh, we've been scrimmaging and doing all that stuff and trying to get ready and, and be in a game-like mode. So, you know, they're, they're good. We got good kids and – you know, they're, they're all about playing, and they're competing right now. Amy, I don't want to hog if somebody else wants to jump in. Yeah, Kevin, Ethan, any questions for Coach Reed? Hey, Coach, I think um, obviously the, the biggest concern – oh, Kevin Wilson here, by the way. Um, How are you doing? I'm, I'm the new uh, EP for Golden Blue Nation. Okay. Uh, just started this, uh, this past month, but um, – Obviously, uh, COVID, a big, uh, a big topic. What has been the um, maybe stuff that you're hearing from the conference, kind of those safety measures? Is it just uh, play as you go? Are there any extra things that you guys are doing day-to-day -to, -day to protect yourself? What's kind of been the day-to-day -day process with the new protocols? Well, you know, first of all, wearing a mask definitely helps. Uh, we're, we're doing it during practice just to be safe. Um, we're preaching to our, our, our players, you know, you got to protect yourselves. You don't want to be out and um, not caring about, you know, how, how deadly and bad this disease is or this virus is. So, you know, first and foremost, protecting themselves individually. And then we're doing it as a team. And then we're also testing three times a week now that we're traveling and uh so that we you know that we're allowed to play coach as a as a follow-up i guess one of the, the biggest things as a head coach is in this kind of climate you gotta tell college students to be careful being college students right so the, the parties and the games uh what are those uh what have those conversations been like with your players um, you know, I, I'm just honest with them. I, I told them, I said, hey, we don't want the Big 12 or our administration to make a decision for us not to play because of what we didn't do or what we did. 
And, um, you know, they're, they, they've they been good about it. You know, we knock on wood, all our players, you know, have been negative. So, and, and the coaching staff and all that. So, you know, I'm, I'm proud of them for doing that and, and, you know, making sure that we're going to play this season. I'm good, Miss Amy. Anybody have any other questions? Yeah, I, I do. If I didn't want to, if Ethan has anything, I'll let him slide in. But um, yeah, yeah, so, Coach, I mean, up until I don't remember when it was, but there was doubt that the season would be played. So, first of all, how concerned were you until you got that word? And what was the relief like when you found out, well, okay, we can at least play a conference season this year? It was always worrisome, right? Because no one knew what was going on. and all that stuff and you know we were optimistic and then I forget when at what point we we're like man I don't know if we're gonna play and and then after that when they announced that we're gonna have a season we were thinking all right we're gonna play the normal season then they then they said it was just gonna be big 12 play but it, you know when we heard that it was a relief and especially our players, you know, the, the one concern they had was how safe is it? And as we progressed and, uh, you know, our, our administration did a great job of educating us and doing all that stuff, they, they you know, our players kind of had a relief that, hey, we can play and, and we're going to be safe. So I think it made it, you know, made their minds clear and they just said hey we're gonna we're going into this and we're gonna compete hard and uh that's what they've been practicing well competing hard at practice and you know I, i'm i'm impressed with where they are right now from a, a physical and a mental standpoint so conference conference only in the fall um yep. Do you know what the spring is going to look like? And, and will the NCAA have its championships in the spring? Because I know they're not doing it in the fall or, you know, December or whenever. Uh, they're talking about it right now. They're talking about a, uh, a spring championship with uh, 48 teams, uh, 32 uh, automatic qualifiers, and then uh, 16 um, at-large bids. And that would be played, uh, I think, the first weekend in May. Um, that's the talk they're 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 having right now. You know, anything can happen. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but um, that's what we're looking forward towards. And you know, we got to do our part in the conference now because it's going to count. It counts for uh, the spring season. You know. Yeah. So. In, in in the uniqueness of the conference schedule, you know two games at a site, you don't get actually the return match. So um, what were the options? Would do you like this setup? I mean, it, you know, cost and safety, you know, only make one trip instead of, you know, as many. So what, what are your thoughts of the way this set season is set up? I think the first thing they were, they were thinking about was uh, the cost. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of taking eight trips now we're taking four trips and um the double hitter series or the format is probably the the fairest um thing you can have from a competition standpoint if this is a two-year cycle you know because that way we're playing texas twice here then we go to texas twice next year and, you know, if we can do that, I think that's the best way to do it. But for right now, I think this is the safest thing to do. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's back to back and the preparation is a little different because before we played Wednesdays and Saturdays. And now we're playing, um, you know, like this, this week we're playing Thursday, Friday. So one, we don't have current um, video or film on, on tech, but we can, you know, we can get that from, you know, they have a lot of returners and get that from last year. And so that's what we're, 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 we're doing right now. 
anybody for you opt out? You have the entire roster you sort of thought you would? Yeah, we're everyone's here, and uh, we have 16 players, and they're all, all here practicing. No one opt out, opted out. Have you been on a plane since March? You, you're going to get on a plane here soon uh, to head to Lubbock. So uh, any worries about that one? Uh, there's always worries, you know. <laughs> so we're going to protect ourselves well. We're, we're wearing a mask and a shield and and wiping things down, all that. But to answer your question, no, I haven't been on a plane since March. And uh, it's going to feel foreign to me because – you know, with the recruiting and all that, normally I'm on a plane every weekend. Amy, that's hey, coach. pretty good for me. Anybody else? Anybody? Hey, Coach. Sam Caniglio with uh, Golden Blue Nation. Um, with all the coaches, you know, starting to get back on the sidelines, one of the biggest things, especially for, you know, I'll, I'll quote Nikki Izzo Brown. She said, it was great to finally just focus on soccer for 90 minutes. Do you have that same mentality? You know, you're a day away. You're a couple of days away from uh, the season starting. Are you excited to just focus on volleyball? Yeah. It, you know, that's uh, what we've been working towards. And it's been great being back in the gym. I think more importantly, our kids love being back in the gym. You know, instead of being home and doing a workout, and that's just an hour or, or whatever. And – you know, they, they're, they're just loving life right now because they can do what they, they love to do, and that's play volleyball.